Thank you. So uh, what are HTML forms? Um, the forms are one of the main points of interaction between a user and a website or application. They allow users to send data to the website. Most of the time, that data is sent to the web server. But the web page can also in, uh, intercept it to use it on its own. An HTML form is made of one or more widgets. These widgets can be text fields, single line or multi-line, select boxes, button, check boxes, or radio buttons. Most of the time, those widgets are paired with a label that describes their purpose. Uh, properly, uh, properly implemented labels are able to clearly instruct both sighted and blind users on what they want to enter into a form input. The main difference between an HTML form and a regular HTML document is that most of the time, the data collected from the form is sent to a web server. In that case, you need to set up a web server to receive and process the data. How to set up a web server is beyond the scope of this article, but if you want to see uh, more sending form data later in the module. I'll say a word. There's a, is there a sending form data? Oh, no, there is. Um, so first up is design, uh, designing your form. Before starting to code, it's always better to step back and take the time to think about your form. Designing a quick mock-up will help you define the right set of data you want to ask the user. From a user experience point of view, it is important to remember that the bigger your form, the more you list, uh, risk user, losing users. Keep it simple and stay focused. Ask only for that data you absolutely need. Designing forms is an important step when you're building a site or application. It's beyond the scope of this article to cover the user experience of forms, but if you want to dig into that topic, you should read the following articles. This is on UX stuff. <clears throat> In this article, we'll build a simple contact form. Uh, kind of looks like this. So you have contact, name, email, message, and then send your message. Our form will contain three text fields and one button. We are asking the user for their name, their email, and the message they want to send. Hitting the button will send their data to a web server. So active uh, learning, implementing our form HTML. Now we're ready to go to HTML and code our form. To build our contact form, we'll use the following HTML elements. So form, label, input, text area, and button. Before you go any further, make a local copy of simple HTML template and you'll enter your HTML into there. So I guess quickly make a template HTML forms. Um. <clears throat> so the form element, all HTML forms start with a form element like this. Okay, so you have action, my handling, form page, post. This element formally defines a form. It's a container element like a div but it also supports some specific attributes to configure the way the form behaves. Um, all of its attributes are optional, but it's considered best practice to at least always have the action attribute and the method action attribute. Action attributes define the location where the form's collected data should be sent when submitted, and the method attribute defines which HTTP method to send the data with it. It can be get or post. Hmm. Okay, so it's going to be form method. 
Oh, wait, no action. It's going to be action first. So do we make like a a separate, let's say like, I don't know, text, right? And then it'd be like form data. And then... No, we're just supposed to add the, add the given code in the body of the index.html that they provided. So what does this like represent? Uh, this is the uh, this is this is the tag for creating a form, and you're just supposed to paste it in the body of the HTML uh, file that you just uh, took from GitHub. This will just uh, create a form. Mm -hmm. We'll have to populate it with the text fields, buttons, and uh, text areas. I understand that. I understand that. Um, I'm just saying this action, my handling form page. Oh, that's just the link that uh, uh, they said that action is where this, uh, where the information that you put in the form will be sent. Sent. So if I make a, like a. Oh, okay. Okay. I understood. Okay. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then reference it with that, would that work? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's find out. Uh, okay. So the element. Uh, next up is the label, input and text area. So our contact form is really simple and includes three text field areas: e to the label, the input field, or the name will be a basic single line text field. Input field for the email will be a single line text field that accepts an email address, and the input field or the message will be a basic multi line text field. Okay. In terms of HTML code, we need something like this. Okay, so there is no button element in the given code. We need to put it there. Um, they're gonna go through that after the first thing. Yeah. That one. I'm like super confused on what half this stuff is. What are you confused about, sorry? <clears throat> so for the input. Four. So I get the, f so for the label, four is, I guess, what? That's a class. Yeah. Or, um, Or mail, and then this is what's displayed. No, so I get that, and then input. So type is going to be email. Okay, I guess this is what you can put in here. Yeah. So if you put type email, then it will check the given input to see if there is a at the rate and dot com in the end, so that. Uh, there's no invalid email there. And then ID is email. <clears throat> or ID is mail. Oh, it's using, it's referencing this. Yeah. 
So does ID have to be the same as, yeah, I'm guessing. And then yeah, I think so. Name. What's the name attribute? The for attribute specifies which form element a label is bound to. So I assume the ID um, has to be the same. And then name is oh, okay. And then I guess one more. So label. Message text Terra So name it's gonna be MSG so it has to be this so names always have to be the same as a four and then wait no name is user message And ID is going to be the same as the four MSG. And then they don't have this. Okay, let's see what pops up. Jesus. My bad, guys. There's some construction happening in my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> You won't be able to submit it without the button. Oh, you're right. The button comes later. Oh, okay, I guess they kind of explain all the... Yeah. Anyways, so the div elements are there to conveniently structure our code and make styling easier. Um, note the use of the for attributes on all the labels. It's a formal way to link a label to a form widget. So the label, so is the input the widget? I think so. And the no, form? no, uh, input, input will specify the type of input that you put so for example for the name label the input type is text it will only take uh, uh, alphabets in it it will not accept any numbers mm -hmm. if you go to the email it will ensure that a proper email format is followed so if you try and put something other than an email in that text form it will show up as a red message uh -huh. and message is just a normal text field to put Whatever message you want to put. So pretty sure the input is a, a is a widget though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But yeah, that's what he's asking. Okay, okay. So yeah, the four and the ID is what links them together. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, note the use of four. It's a formal way to link a label to a form widget. This attribute references the ID. Oh, okay, true. Of the corresponding. I really need to like think read things through before I ask questions. Um, there is some benefit of doing this. The most obvious one is to allow the user to click on the label to activate the corresponding widget. What? Oh, okay. Say word. I don't know. Um, okay. So the most obvious one is to allow the user to click on a label to activate the corresponding widget if you want a better understanding of other benefits of this attribute you can find details in how to structure an html form okay. on the input element the most important attribute is the type attribute this attribute is extremely important because it defines the way the input elements behave you'll find more about this yo is that super loud for you guys it's not too bad okay You'll find more about this in a native form widget article later on. Uh, so in our simple example, we use the value text for the first input. 
and default value for this attribute. It represents a basic inline text field that accepts any kind of text input. So in our simple example, we use the text field for the, and default value for this attribute. Okay. Um, so if you don't put any attribute, it automatically goes to text. Yeah. yeah. For the second input, we use the value email that defines a single line text. <coughs> it accepts a well-formed email address. This turns a basic text field into a kind of intelligent field that will perform some checks on the data type used by the user. You'll find more about form validation in the form data validation article later. Uh, but last but not least, the note the syntax of input versus text era, text area. Uh, this is one of the oddities of HTML. The input tag is an empty element, meaning that it doesn't need a closing tag. On the contrary, text area is not an empty element. So you have to close it with an opening for the proper ending tag. This has an impact uh, on a specific feature of HTML forms. The way you use the, the way you define the default value. To define the default value of an input element, you have to use the value attribute like this. By default. Yo, does someone else want to read for now? I'll like pop in later when everything dies down a little bit. Sure. All right. Um, by default, this element is filled with this text. That's what the value is. On the contrary, if you want to define the default value of a text area, you just have to put, at, put that default value between the opening and closing tag of the text area element like this. Okay, you just put it inside of the tags or yeah, in between. Uh, the button element, our form is almost ready. We just have to add a button to allow the user to send their data once they have filled out the form. This is simply done by using the button element. Add the following just above the closing form tag. Okay, add a div class button. And button is a as a closing tag as well. We have to put a message in. We can. Okay, so when you click on it, it goes to the uh, the specified action in the form tag. So what if I put Okay. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't push the value to the form that you just text field that you just created. It needs another web page, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. You see that the button element also accepts the type type attribute. This accepts one of three values: submit, reset, or button. A click on us a, a click on a submit button, the default value sends the form's data to the web page defined by the action attribute of the form element. Click on the reset button resets all the form widgets to the default value immediately. From a UX point of view, this is considered bad bad practice. A click on a button on a button button does nothing. That sounds silly, but it's amazingly useful for building custom buttons with JavaScript. You can also use the input element with the corresponding type to produce a button. For example, input type submit, the main advantage of the button element is that the input element only allows plain text as its label, whereas the button element allows full HTML content, allowing more complex creative button text. Um, okay, basic form styling. Now that you've finished writing your form's HTML code, Try saving it and looking at it in a browser. At this point, you'll see that it looks rather ugly. Yeah, it's completely misaligned. And the button is in a weird spot. 
If you don't think you, you've got the HTML code right, try comparing it with a finished example. Forms are notoriously tricky to style nicely. It is beyond the scope of this article to teach you form styling. So for the moment, we'll get just get you to add some CSS to make it look okay. Okay, so we'll add a, a style tag. Uh, and then we'll copy and paste all the CSS. We'll see. Okay, that centers the form. There's an outline. Resizes all the labels so they're the same size and are properly aligned. Um, make sure all the text fields have the same fonts. Same size to the text field. Okay. And yeah, this looks better. Yeah, it's a lot better. Sending form data to your web server. The last part, and maybe the trickiest, is to handle form data on the server side. As I said before, most of the time an HTML form is a convenient way to ask the user for data and to send it to a web server. The form element will define where and how to send the data thanks to the action attribute and the method attribute. But it's not enough. We also need to give a name to our data. Those names are important on both sides, on the browser side. It tells the browser which name to give each piece of data. And on the server side, it lets the server handle each piece of data by name. To name the data in a form, you need to use a name attribute on each form widget that will collect a spe specific piece of data. Let's look at some of our form code again. Okay, for so example, that's what the name attributes for. Yeah. Uh, in our example, the form will send three pieces of data named username, user email, and user message. That data will be sent to the URL, my handling form page using the HTTP POST method. On the server side, the script at the URL uh, will receive the data as a list of three key value items embodied in the HTTP request. The way the script will handle that data is to you. Each server side language, PHP, Python, Ruby, Java, C Sharp, et cetera, has its own mechanism. It's beyond the scope of this guide to to go deeply into that subject, but if you want to know more, we have provided some examples in the sending form data article. Summary, congratulations, you've built your first HTML form. It looks like this live. That's the only beginning. However, now it's time to take a deeper look. HTML forms are way more powerful than what we saw here, and the other articles of this guide will help you to master the rest. Sorry, I just want to try one thing really quickly. All right. Never mind, I don't think that would work. Okay.
Oh, all right. Are right, you guys good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the basics out of the way, we will we now look in more detail at the elements used to provide structure and meaning to the different parts of the form. Uh, flexibility of HTML5 